So, Darren, in, in regard to your understanding of what the Australian government, at least, thoughts around the cryptocurrency space, mm. what my understanding is that they tolerate it right now and there are capital gain tax to consider once you exchange or if you exchange to another crypto or if you uh, convert to fiat, there's capital gains tax consideration. Um, what, in your experience, what can you tell us about what the government's thinking in regards to the future of crypto? I'm not, I'm not overly confident the government really gets it at the moment. Um, and those of us who study the land cycle know that government are always one or two steps behind what's really happening. Um, yeah, the crypto at the moment, I think from the Treasury, ATO, and um, you know the Office of the Prime Minister, yeah, they tolerate it at the moment. They're happy with the legislation that dictates the tax treatment of them at the moment. But there's still a lot of grey areas that um, continue to be uncovered. Now, one of the best ways to get free legal advice from the ATO is to um, get what they call a PBR, private binding ruling. Now, in this space, a lot of the legislation is as a result of the ATO taking themselves to court when these things come up to determine how should the tax law treat, you know, as uh, Jason said, staking things and people who have, um, you know, different corporations set up for trading, but they also have... Uh, you know, um, personal use of Bitcoin just to buy stuff online on Amazon. All, all these sort of things ended up on the door of, you know, ATO and they had to go to to the high court basically to get rulings on these things, you know. So it's an ever-evolving space at the moment. But in terms of the tax, I really get the sense that they they feel they missed an opportunity early in this space to get the tax that they thought that they should have been getting from them. I'm not sure how they will possibly do that. I think that those people just had a window where they could just literally get away with it and that, that's done. But I know government and you never say never. You never say never. They may end up tracking down those early providers and working out what they've been doing, you know. Um, we've also had people lose money in exchanges and ask what can we do for this? Well, very little, unfortunately, <laughs> very little. I think at the moment there is a possibility because someone took ATO to task on this. It is possible that you might be able to, if you've lost coins, write them as a capital loss against future gains. Yeah. It's yes, possible. I've, heard, I've, I've, I've read that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's possible, but that will be, I guarantee, on a case by case basis. That's not a blanket rule at, at all. So, yeah, um, but this is why governments sort of tolerate it. I know it sounds like a, a bad thing, but that tolerance is also because it's such a fast moving space and they're so far behind with what's really happening. People like, you know, Jason and his, his cohort of supporters, the things that they want to be interested in and knowing, the government is still struggling to try to come to terms with that as well. And yeah, you get tax agents that literally have to come in and fill that void on behalf of their customers, you know? So still with, paying tax on cryptocurrency it's up to the individual to give over the information the government doesn't really have a way of tracking it to that degree if they were transferring coins to a, a, an exchange that is set up in a different jurisdiction or a decentralized exchange which has no jurisdiction and then what happens when you bring those coins back and i know it's a specific question but if they don't have a way to track that what what do you think they'll do there well, if you were to be audited by the ATO in that case, right, and they and you said, so let's say your scenario was exactly what you've described to me, and the ATO says, look, we're concerned, we think you're not declaring A, B, and C in you know, last year's tax return. Um, there are a few ways you can mediate with the tax office on the basis of, look, you need to tell me exactly what you need, and then I need to find out how best to obtain those records to show you, given the limitations of, you know, the, the, the governance of the um, 
excuse me, the governance of the exchange that I'm using might be overseas. It's decentralized. There's very little you know, information given back to me other than what happens in and out of a blockchain. Um, yeah, it's and, and again, this is why this is why I say with confidence that this sort of stuff is tolerated by government because they, they hate the grey. They hate not knowing exactly where they stand when they're chasing this you know, capital gains or, or tax and things like that. Um, it's very difficult on both sides of the ledger to do it. But I would advise, look, the ATO won't come in with the hammer, first off, if you're upfront, transparent with them and explain the issues you have in providing the records that they need. They will generally work with you to, to get that, you know. And as the understanding exposes, I think that the ATO is coming to the, around to the point that um, it is difficult for individual investors to, to find this information particularly in a timely manner as well. But if you come out all guns blazing, I, would, I wouldn't recommend that. Just work with the, with the ATO and be honest, tell them. Do you know what they use to track these transfers? I know the US uses like Chainalysis. Have you heard of that company or do you know what, what the ATO uses? I have an idea and I'm not allowed to say <laughs> because I signed a agreement not to talk about that stuff when I left. But that's part, what you're describing, right. what you're describing is the ATO's, da, what they call data matching. And that all encompasses right. an enormous amount of software across all asset classes to track this sort of stuff. Um, I'm not sure if, if, the AT, if Australia has quite the sophisticated setup that the US has, but they would not be far behind. What do you do between those exchanges? Like you said, when it's when it's losses, uh, do you just tell them, all right, I've lost it. What happens if you lose your keys? You're like, well, sitting over there on that exchange, it's sitting over there on that wallet, but I have no way to access it. Do they just still slap you with a fine? Like, a, well, you, we think you got a hundred grand sitting over there. Here's a tax bill for 50 grand. Transfer it into Mixer wallet to transfer into decentralized exchanges you can transfer it anywhere and say well it is there but i don't have use of it anymore then maybe if they mm. track it and they say well it's moving again who's got use of it they're like well i don't know i sent it to an ico and they're playing with it yeah that's the part that they'll get is the transfer mm. that's the part they'll pick up i'm pretty certain of it that's what they're doing in the us that's how they're tracking down these people that are um, you know, people are doing bad things and they've got billions of dollars worth of this stuff. It's the transferring in and out of these different wallets and exchanges that the US has worked out how to follow. So ATO would probably be at that level or if not, not far behind. Mm. I can see more of that occurring with MasterCard and PayPal and Apple Pay now integrating Bitcoin in their services. Mm -hmm. And people then using their Bitcoin or their cryptocurrency stores to pay for things. So it, it's, it, it seems that, that that's more, um, more open and uh, more able to be tracked by the, that, that, that government software. What do you think about that, Darren? Double-edged sword. Yes, it is. The more mainstream you get, the more in inclusive you make the buying and selling and just normal transactionary part of these Bitcoin and altcoin things, the more regulatory oversight you're inviting into it. So it's like this unwanted relationship between you and government and the exchanges that just you can't overcome really if it's going to go that, that um, mainstream, you know, with, with the likes of, of Apple's and MasterCard. MasterCard are interesting. They've got patents, five or six years old in this space, trying to make sure they take first mover advantage when a, a digital reserve currency comes out from, I don't know, the US Treasury or wherever it is. And they'll just start adding digital fiat to their blockchain. So these companies, they're thinking ahead. They're like, And they've got the inside track to government and what they want to do ultimately. So you need to watch places like, for instance, MasterCard, with that real real estate cycle lens, Kathy, and really understand what the relationship is with these guys in government and why they're doing what they are. Follow it to its 
its its ultimate conclusion, which is they're just in it for first mover advantage, beat out competition, and to work with government for the benefit of their shareholders. It's and that's just what they always do. And that's how mm-hmm. I read any of this news that comes mm-hmm. out with that, you know, very pragmatist, skeptical eye. But there's always something that's not being said that's actually the truth of that. Because they're banks. I mean shit, we know what banks are like. Yeah, well, it was interesting to, Jason sent me a link to a video um, that had some information about in the US, the state of Miami and how the government of Miami have now accepted uh, cryptocurrency as as a valid payment form for taxes and fines and employee payments and so forth. That, that, that's huge. Um, that's huge. If, if, if you can pay taxes with it, that's huge. Yeah, that's really important. This is the thing about um, yeah. cryptocurrency is about tax. You don't want to pay. T- you don't want to pay tax. So once the government accepts it, then <laughs> you're paying tax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's right. And I, look, in my opinion, the number one expense in your entire life are taxes. If you're going straight, we get taxed everywhere. And yeah, you are right. You have got to fight back. You have got to find more ways to maximise reducing your tax by all legal means possible. That is a critical part of your investment journey, in my opinion. Mm, it really yeah. is. Now, mm-hmm. yeah, that this is why watching news like that from Miami about, oh, we'll embed it into our payroll system. You can use Bitcoin, but we'll also tax you on it as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Sounds it's good. good news, but it's not really. <laughs> it is not. At least no. it's in that system. Um, At least you can get the cash in Bitcoin. And then if you're smart enough with your funds, you can move it into a, a mixer. You can move it, in, move it into something else that's private, loses track of where it's come mm. from. That's that. So I don't know if we're getting yeah. that, that easier gateway into yeah. the space. Does that allow us to then reduce our tax? Oh, God, you'd hope so. I just don't want government involved. I just don't want it, you know? Yeah. I don't want them involved in all the stuff that we we all invest in and try and build a future for our family. Then just get the hell out. But yeah, you're right. It's a double edged sword, Jason. One of the thoughts that I had in regards to the cryptocurrency and land. And this is really for our PSE members that understand the law of economic rents, the 18.6 year economic cycle, values you know, in society ultimately end up in the price of land. And from a government tax perspective, uh, if you own your property in Australia, if you own your property then you don't, and you sell it, you don't pay any tax. If you have a property that's an investment, there's all kinds of uh, discounts when you sell your property, uh, you've got depreciation on the building, all that kind of thing. You know, it's really geared to uh, support land prices and uh, the tax paid on your land is very, compared to income taxes, it's minimal. And that's due to vested interests. It's due to vested interests. The monopoly of land is due to vested interests. The most richest people in the world, most of them own land. They don't have to pay tax on it or minimal tax. Now, we're having some major companies that are buying you know, crypto. And in my mind, is that now, could that, from a government perspective, from these these large company perspectives then uh, encourage governments to not worry about crypto in terms of the taxation perspective, just like land. Let's just leave it, leave it as its own, its own asset class and it flies under the radar just like ownership of land fly, flies under the radar in regards to economic rent and tax. Now, what are your thoughts on that? That's a question for Darren. Oh, for me. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> it... Yeah, I, 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 I do agree broadly. I do agree broadly. Um, I mean, you know, Bitcoin and these altcoins, I mean, when I first started looking at them in 2013, they, they promised you know, a revolution and now it's just another financial instrument to be mm. used and abused by, you know, whoever cares to, to move into that space. Um, you, it's the behaviour that people show during the cycle of the speculative phases and the chasing of the rent and the use of government granted licenses to monopolize and reduce competition in space. And, you know, I hope not that the future of Bitcoin could be twisted and turned into something akin to that, you know, where it is a monopolistic type of um, instrument that only, you know, a handful of people ultimately really can control. Um, in terms of the land market, there's talk about um, using uh, tokens and blockchains to allow people to buy parcels of, of property and then sell them between themselves to build up a portfolio that way. That will definitely increase land values of, of those involved. It's no different to people buying space rights above properties on a, say, a beachfront so they don't get developed and ruin the view. You can do that now. You can actually buy the space above those so that no one can build there and interrupt your view. That's a government grant license, yes? You are monopolizing thin air for your benefit. Mm. So your property takes those gains because you will always have that view. Mm. So yeah, yeah, I, I, it, yeah. Speaking, I'm, yeah. I do agree. Yeah. It's something we need to research and keep on, on top of as well. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, that's something that we benefit. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, that the, the crypto space may that's become a, a protected fantastic. asset similar to what land is because of major companies and uh, ownership of it. They don't want to pay tax on it, like they don't want to pay tax on land. Yeah, it's a risk. Yeah. Right, so you think it'll go down that more private path for the crypto? I mean, land, land is privatized. And then it's not taxed the way That's right. it could be in order to give back to society. That's we right. see it in a couple of countries, like um, Portugal. That's one that I was speaking with some some friends. I did a video on online as well on, on my on my channel, and they moved to Portugal. They don't pay taxes on any cryptocurrency, and there are, there are a few other countries like that as well. It just seems like it's it's extremely involved. So it's either going to, and I think what you're saying is well, Darren. I think it's always like we have this new technology or something that seems like it should be there for a good cause and then government gets its hands involved and then it's a beast. So you still have that option have that. to use it for its original intended purposes, but you have to go through the hoops and you have to learn now what the government is doing to it and how they're manipulating it so that you can then benefit from it as well for its intended use. Mm. So that's one thing. Exactly. And then in terms of how exactly. difficult it is, it's, I think they, they may just, I, I have no idea, obviously, but it is sounding like it's getting really difficult with all of these extra features that you can do with cryptocurrency. So it might just keep some people away once it comes time to do taxes and they might just say, well, it's too much. I'm just going to go back in the stock market. Or you'll have the other group that are like, no, there's, there's other opportunities out there the government can't track or there's just no ruling on it. So I'm going to give it a crack you know more than me in that space, like how many times people and see what the government try to do. And I don't know if that really sure. I mean, ties sure. into your 18.6 year cycle question, Kathy, but. No, it's, no, it's actually. Yeah, well, that's, um, that's something there's a land investor. Right? Yeah, yeah. So my, my thing was, was about our PSC members understanding an 18.6 year cycle because it's land US land values are the leading indicator of that. Uh, it's about governments turning a blind eye relatively to ownership of private ownership of land and how land increases in value year on year in general, but there's no tax paid on it. Once the land is sold, there's still minimal tax 
paid on it. Now, yeah. that's, a bl- that's turning a blind eye. All I'm saying is because, and, and they, they turn a blind eye because of the vested interests. Because the rich, some of the richest people in the world own land and they, they're the richest people in the world because they own land. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just raising the idea that I wonder if cryptocurrency will be a similar thing where the government will just turn a blind eye to it because of the vested interests, the major companies in the world that are now investing in Bitcoin and they'll continue to, they don't want to pay tax. So governments, well, we'll just leave it over there and we'll turn a blind eye to it. So that's all I'm suggesting that from my future perspective. Okay. Just an idea. An idea. <laughs> Yeah, you could paint a you could paint a picture. I mean, I saw what happened with Libra when Facebook released it. Um, the uh, counter attack on that announcement, and look, it wasn't very well thought out. There were significant knowledge gaps when Facebook released it, so you have to acknowledge that. But within a day or two, every US bank was on a vicious attack on Facebook that they would dare think to have their own um, token available to what 300, 400 million. Yeah, Facebook users and their own ecosystem and stuff outside the banking system rolled them up knowing and then that got the US government in. I thought that, and I've not heard too much about Libra since then. I think Facebook have come back away from the public with it. But that kind of reaction is telling. Mm. It really is. And if you kind of understand that uh, um, relationship that banks and governments have for your study the cycle, it's, it's no surprise. The, the Facebook thing, they turned it into DM. Yeah, the Facebook thing, they turned it into DM. From They went from Libra to DM, rebranded it. Uh, it wasn't going to be a token that you can, that increases in value like Libra. So it was really uh, targeting the like a central bank digital currency, which is now we see the banks have created their own. So they're CBDCs. So Facebook was really in front of what the banks wanted to. They hit them, brought Facebook down, created their own exact same thing as what Facebook was doing, essentially. And now they have theirs in front of Facebook. So Facebook is still trying to do another coin token called DM, yeah, which is then just the individual uh, currencies around the world, as opposed to what Libra was, which was a basket of all of them to keep a stable price between world currencies. So they're not allowed to do that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, watch this space. Watch this space. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, um, another thing too might be worth watching. We all know what's happening with um, uh, the big tech space. Um, so you look at you know your Amazons and your Apples and your Alphabets. They're coming under significant global government pressure to stop using shell companies around the world to move their profits. So again, it's the heart of this is, is tax, that the governments feel they're not getting their share, right? So people are prophesizing, well, maybe that inhibits future earnings of those companies on the NASDAQ. So let's just say that they do come under more pressure to report earnings and have them taxed, right? That flows through to your share price. Well, what if, um, what if they do what you suggested, Kathy? What do they decide to you to get into the crypto space primarily to create yet another tax shelter that's again outside of government spheres, right? It's within the thesis of the cycle. It is it is uh, uh, again another example of use and abuse for government granted license, and it's just this like it's an arms race between governments and and, and tech. I don't know that's what will happen, but it's an interesting thing to study and and. You know, if we start to see what you've suggested, Kathy, it may indicate that maybe they're thinking the same as well. Mm. And there will be implications. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We need to watch that leading into 2024, 2025, 2026. You know, that's uh, very interesting. Mm. All right. So your advice, Darren, is to do everything you can not to pay tax. Yep. Great <laughs> advice. Thank you. We're done. I've got okay, nothing else to add. Yeah, honest, honest to God, you, 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 
I wish I wish crypto investing had the same tax loopholes that property did, you know, that you could legally exploit. I really do, but unfortunately, it's, property's arguably the best way, the best way to do that. But you've you've got it. Everything you can legally do to reduce your tax, the way it compounds over your life, you'd be staggered with the amount of money that you can get back. You really can. I, I've and got a little no calculator on that. that it's in property and land, if the government allow it. Sorry, Dave. I don't know if I did it at this time. Have you ever done, if you were to double a dollar every year for 20 years, how much you'd end up with? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. It's, 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 it's a, a million, a a million 48,000, something like that. <laughs> if you doubled a dollar every year, obviously no one's yeah. going to do that, but that's if you had it in your pocket and you double that every time. Now, if you took 50% tax on that every year. So one year you had a dollar, next year you had two, pay 50% tax on the profits. Now you've got $1.50 instead. So, you know, you made a dollar profit, you paid 50 cents in tax. Do that again the next year, next year, next year. How much you would have in 20 years. First example was you'll have 1,048,000. If you take 50% profit every year on the doubles, how much would you have? Just a rough guess. Just a rough guess. Why, why, why? <laughs> it's about I'm so tempted to grab you, my calculator right now but I'd say way way less do you want to have a quick guess Kathy so 300,000 um, yeah I was going to say 300 3,000 3,200 dollars ah. is that right that's ridiculous you can't believe it you that's can't ridiculous. believe it but yeah if you were to do if you were to do, I think I did it on 30% or 35%, that was my other example, you'd have 24,000. Yeah. Yeah, Even yeah, just yeah, that, yeah. you know, 30% tax Even on it. That, yeah, 30% yeah. tax. So really, you have to do everything you can not to pay any tax, especially with inflation over everything, money printing, everything. Yes. Yeah. yeah. As little as little as possible. Yeah. You are so right, Jason, because you've just demonstrated how it compounds over your life. It's like a trickle, but then it becomes a dam. You get to your twenties, your thirties, your forties. It's astonishing. Yeah. It's astonishing. And yeah, that's excellent advice. That's incredible. So, <laughs> I think it's such a simple thing to do. You have a nice calculator. It's that's like do everything you can not to pay any tax. Well, as little as possible, uh, but. I always have to add to that because as people start to listen to that, they're like, well, how do you help society? Like society needs taxes to grow. And I just say, well, it's not about not helping society and keeping it off yourself. We still have to work together as a society, but it's just in terms of how much is taken for what's in return just seems crazy. And then where it all goes, like we, you know, we're about in the cycle. It's just all gets accumulated into land values, not taxed, wealthier get even wealthier with their land and then everyone else is left paying their 30% tax on their measly 50 grand salaries or 80 grand salaries or 200 grand salaries. Like it's just, it's so disproportionate that people just don't get it. So we that's really right. have to pay no tax. It's the land that needs to be taxed. Yeah. And that that's, I'm so glad that you raised that Jason, because you're absolutely right. This is not about not contributing to society. This is about which yeah. income gets taxed which income gets taxed is it your earned income you know the wage or is it the income that you get from land you know it's which income which isn't gets contributing taxed. to society which the land doesn't taxed. contribute to society that, that's right so um it's not about not paying tax it's about or and contributing it's about which which one gets taxed redistribution the of the wealth that's yeah. what everyone's going on about this. That's the agenda, you know, this decade or last decade, which is leading yeah. into this one. Yeah. Well, it is. I just, you know, what would be wonderful if the, if, um, the next generation, generation under me, <laughs> which is your generation, Jason, <laughs> more, more of your age group understood the difference between earned income and unearned income and which one gets taxed and which one doesn't. And uh, what benefits could occur if we kept our wages, we kept our earned income, yet we shared that value that we get in land, we shared that amongst society and used that to create hospitals and roads and 
schools and so forth. It's, that's what I, that's what, you know, property share market economics, that's what, you know, one of the things that we wish for people to learn and understand more about. Anyway, that's totally going that. off the subject of crypto and, <laughs> and uh, government, but um, it is, it, yeah, it's all, it is connected. Yeah. It is. We, I mean, we're all making we're, huge we're, money on crypto. There's lots of profits flying around everywhere. It's not about everyone just holding it for themselves and never contributing back and accumulating all these masses in coins. It's like, we still need to understand what we can do on the other side because usually there's, you know, how cryptocurrency started was with going to get rid of government and the fed, all this sort of stuff. And it's like, well, we still need to work as a society. So it was from like a libertarian anarchist point of view. And it's still now like, well, it's a good idea, but what do we do to build the, our society moving forward in a decentralized manner? So we have the alternatives here and we have a way to create enough income from the land to be able to pay for everything in society and we keep all of our own earned income. That's right. Darren, Kathy? Yeah, yeah. Look, um, the key to it is records. Keep as good records as you can. Um, I, I will investigate. I know that there are publicly available um, electronic ledgers that uh, can link to your personal preference or train platforms that can record that stuff for you. Um, and they can probably give you a end of financial year breakdown as well. I'll find those out, Jason, and I can send them to you if people are interested in it. But yeah, the, the maintainer records, one is this key. Number two, just accept that the ATO wallet may not contact you, you know, next financial year. They have the platform, the digital ability to track what's going on and they may come to you eventually. So on top of good records, Keep those records safe. If you can, scan them or keep them in a, a hard drive so that you've always got them there just in case. Um, dealing with the ATO, it's not as bad as it sounds, but if they think you're up to no good, um, the, the powers that they can put on you to shut down your life are horrendous, absolutely horrendous. I've seen it myself many, many times. So good records. Work with the ATA to get the tap on the shoulder. They're not as scary as you think, but you've got to work hard, study, and learn how to minimise your tax on everything you do in your life. Because as you just showed, Jason, the compounding effect of that is simply incredible. And that's money that you guys have worked hard. You've risked your capital. You've gone through the emotional ringer to try and make a better life for yourself and for your family and take those risks on board. You should be well rewarded for that, you know? There's plenty of money in the world for everyone to have a great life. But you can bet that the government will want their fair share. So keep working hard to, to find ways to, to minimise that. You, we talk about the third point of minimising tax in every way. If we've made all these big profits in crypto, how do we minimise the taxes there in order to then go and buy the land to get the tax benefits? You know, you've actually got to go a step back. It's how are you how are you doing your trading? Are you an individual or are you a company or are you a trust? That makes a big difference right. over the course of your investment journey is how you set up yourself to trade. So obviously, uh, trusts and company have specific um, uh, tax laws around them that individuals uh, may not have. Um, Australian tax companies is quite high. Though, um, if you can find a way that you can perhaps make a company overseas that's got better tax treatment, I would probably investigate that. But yeah, Jason, it comes down to how you actually started your journey in the first place. Unfortunately, as an individual in this space, the capital gains tax bill eventually is going to be probably horrendous if you've been trading for the last couple of years. Um, bring up a chart of Bitcoin, you can imagine the kind of capital gains that's, that certain people could have, have done. But as a trust or a company, and hopefully your tax specialist can divulge more into that, uh, that would be something if I was starting today that I would definitely investigate. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an Australian one either. I'd like to learn more about that for yeah, our perfect. viewers, uh, Darren um, and Jason, how to set up a, a company offshore and where, I've how.